Ball, first and 10 at the 12-yard line of the Seahawks. Sean goes right, has a cutback lane, and he does. He's across the 20, the 25, 30, 35, 40. Here he goes. Are they going to catch him? 40, 35, 30. Touchdown, Seahawks! 12, they're bringing the trophy home. Your Seahawks, Super Bowl 48 champion. Holy catfish! Baldwin's going to throw back to Russell. He's got it! Touchdown! Seahawks! Are you kidding me? Let's hawk it out with your hosts, Kevin Porter and Rich Harris. Two minutes left in the game. Kevin Porter hikes back the ball. Rich Harris slants across the field. Kevin Porter releases. Oh my gosh, it's a touchdown. Rich Harris. Right. What's up? Welcome to Let's Hawk It Out, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing, Rich? Like, let me know. I want to know. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. I just scored a touchdown from a cast from a pass, excuse me, from my homie Kevin Porter. Uh that you was weird. save that one, dude. You, you, you got some one, improv dude. there. That was awesome. I didn't I didn't know what kind of intro you had this week, but uh that was cool. Yeah. Touchdown yeah, pass. Man. I used to play wide receiver. I'm good with that. I used to How play you, the quarterback, dude. There you go. Oh, that was perfect. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing I'm doing wonderful, Rich. Uh, it's uh, it's still 90 degrees outside, so we're still experiencing a little bit of summertime uh, weather. So I'm definitely happy to uh, be alive here today on the podcast with you and all our beautiful listeners out there in internet land. Um, I'm ready to talk about the Seattle Seahawks, man, and their preseason, their very first preseason game of the, of the year against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dude, that was uh, pretty interesting, pretty awesome. I mean, I don't like I said, I think in the last podcast we were talking about we don't really expect much in the preseason, right? It's just, no, hey, you don't. let's mm-hmm. let's watch it, let's support our team, uh, let's be open minded, let's see what happens, and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Let's let I guess I'm ready to ask for your opinion overall. I mean, what do you think overall? Well, o- overall, man, I mean, I, I did take some notes up on this shit and like the first thing i i i think because i did miss the first like i don't know i think i I missed like the first like five to ten minutes of the game uh but the first the first play i saw was kobe bryant uh getting that touchdown thrown up on him uh in the end zone and uh i thought he had some pretty good coverage in there but like the the quarterback for the pittsburgh steelers i forget is that was that rudolph was that rudolph that was uh playing yeah i think it was rudolph at the time yeah but dude i mean rudolph threaded the needle on that the receiver was the guy that was getting all the touches or all the catches that whole series or even the series mm. before that with the other but dude that, i mean come on that was one of those corner that looked like an old russell wilson tyler lockett you know i mean something like throw. that tippy toe no flintstone is what i call it remember uh, uh what did they call him twinkle toes flintstone <laughs> exactly. remember when fred flintstone used to dance on his big toes like that that's what i always call that when those guys do the little touch uh, at the with their feet but uh, in the end zone like that well, they obviously learn from the, the best, dude. I mean, I don't know. I was always oh, yeah. partial to Barney Rubble, but, you know. Fred's oh, Flintstone. but nobody does anything like Twinkle Toes Flintstone. Come on. That's right, dude. I know. I know. I got, I got to admit it, dude. Flintstone all the way, dude. So. That's right. I, I Overall, though, dude, I thought there was a it was a, it was a good impre- first impression of what kind of team that we're going to be having this year. Um, I was listening, you know, we listened to Coach, Coach Carroll. I listened to his uh, post-game press conference, him uh, making comments about how, you know, in the first half there, you know, like, they weren't tackling very well, dude. I mean, the, the Steelers obviously got, I mean, a lot on our defense there early on, but in true Seahawks fa- uh, fashion later in the game, we made our way back, dude. We made a comeback though. So, I mean, we, we lost barely, you know, we barely lost. I mean, obviously that freak fumble by Drew Locke at the very end, but like at the same time, you know, it's like, that's going to happen to anybody, unfortunately. And we just got to like clean that up a little bit, whatever, whatever cleaning that is, you know, that's what they need to uh, focus on and make sure that they can uh, protect the quarterback in the pocket right uh, because i mean uh, I, and i want to go back and give my opinion on uh, two of those things the kobe like i said the kobe one i think he, he did have good coverage i don't think he had great coverage but for a rookie in his first nfl game ever exactly. i think he had yeah. good coverage i think it was all in that guy's face and it was just pure uh just precision with between it's the quarterback and that receiver lot. <laughs> it was, but it was, but I mean, the, it was a perfect pass, perfect timing, and it the was. very last part of that corner of that end zone. Um, and then the other part we were talking about, which uh, remind me again, the second part that you had just said. 
Um, just, just, oh yeah, they weren't tackling very well at the beginning. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I've seen a couple of those guys, even Tariq Woolen and them, they, you know, they, they, they were just missing tackles in the open field. So those are the things we talked about last week. Like, you know, we're expecting some things to go wrong, mm -hmm. but then overall, it sounds like you're a little bit kind of surprised. Like I was, I mean, not for the wrong reasons, just because our expectations weren't too high on right. how well the team looked and how organized they looked. Well, um, I mean, I thought the offense right out the gate. I mean, it seemed like Geno Smith definitely had some problems there, but I mean, he managed to like in that second quarter, he, he did have a lot better, um, you know, half in terms of like the first half, you know, cause they only, they both like switched halves or whatever. Right. And like Gino, he started off rough. I mean, obviously the offense didn't do shit. They got that one field goal. That was it. And, but then at that two minute drive, I mean, they, they went down and he scored that touchdown, dude. And he had some really impressive, like little runs in there, dude. Like, I was actually, you know, pleasantly surprised to see that. I thought so too, but I, you know, and, and, and yeah, to add to that, I think Gino played kind of conservatively, you know, he kind of plays like mm. modestly, I guess, just, just enough to get it done and and he's often been uh, coined as a game manager so i think right. we can see that with uh gino and there's nothing wrong with that you know you just i call it holding down the fort right you're you're competent enough to hold down the fort and you're going to be trusted to do that you may not jump off the page um and you may just be able to get the team by with what they need at the time and that's what it still seems like the tune is or the theme kind of with Geno Smith and then uh yeah as we get more into the second half you know I mean Drew Locke that's again the word surprise I was a little bit surprised with him not necessarily because he doesn't necessarily have the talent but we we don't know much about him right we got to see this exactly to understand so, so and I, I saw a lot what'd you see um well I was just gonna ask you just a quick question I mean so you know obviously this coming Thursday we have you know the game against the Chicago Bears do you think that they're gonna that he's gonna get the number he's gonna get the the reps with all the uh, the ones going into this week or do you think they're just gonna insert Gino again? If they have it really data driven, right, and they're gonna look at it like that, then they'll they they have every justification probably to say give him a chance. And right. that what does that do? That just pushes the competition more, right? Right. Um, because I think he deserve he would deserve it. I don't think that wouldn't be uh, out of line to have him do it because again here they are trading off and to have a good competition you need to give him his chance with the ones and give him his starting chance as well so that's a great question and i think yes i think it's very um relevant and i think it's possible i really do good yeah, good question yeah, yeah. No, I, um, give him well, a shot I mean, yeah well i was like i want to pull up the uh the, the stats here um which i, I pulled up the, the article that we had on here you know it says you know right off here dude um, Smith, who handled the first half, he went 10 for 15 for 101 yards and uh, made two, two big time throws, according to uh, the, the article here. But Locke also took over for the second half and went 11 for 15 for 102 with two touchdowns and one time, you know, one big throw down the field. Right. Um, so, I mean, I think, yeah, we're in a dead heat, you know, a tie in a sense, you know, I think like, I think, I don't know. And that's exciting. I think, I think that's very exciting. I do too. I do too, because, and, and what's exciting is to see both of them hold down the fort. Like I just said, the, the, those analogy words, uh, both of them were able to go out there move the team, make success. I, I didn't write down their uh, quarterback ratings. I know, I think Geno's was like 80 something, but I think Drew's was off the page, like 120 something or whatever, just because of, you know, his uh, ratio and then yeah. the amount of scores that he had in there. And the two touchdowns, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, early on, I was like, man, he's really including the rookies. Uh, you know, you got uh, Bo Melton, that first one that he threw in that first series. He had that like 40 yard pass. Well, it wasn't really a 40 yard pass. It was a shorter pass. Nice pass. And then Bo Melton just turned on his burners, did a little juke and turned on his burners. It was like a 39 gain. And then I think it was the same series where he found Derek Young in the end zone. And I was like, man, they're getting the rookies involved. And then there was more to that that I didn't really think about until I woke up today and started reading articles and stuff and was like, oh, yeah, duh, you know, <laughs> there, there's cuts coming up. Right. So why wasn't DK playing and why wasn't Tyler playing and why wasn't on the defense Jamal and Quandre? It's because not, you know, they, obviously they're going to save them, um, but they have to give these. There's a small window to give certain people their chance to go out and play against another team before that first window of cuts comes and i have a link in there too on those cuts coming up tuesday we're going to go from 90 to 85 so only five people are going to be gone but they're going to be gone like by 4 p.m i think eastern 
I, I think so. It's 4 p.m. sometime. Usually it's Eastern, I think. And so our time would be 1 p.m. So you're going to see five Seahawks get let go. And then there's another uh, group there, if you queued up on it yet. Uh, let's see here. August 23rd, it's going to go 85 to 80. And then August 30th, it's going to go from 80 down to the 53-man roster. So basically every week from here on out on a Tuesday, you're going to see cuts. Yeah. Until the the final right leading up to the when are when are the final cuts made? When do they need to like bring that shit down to the the final number for the NFL teams? Is that like the, September? That's the thirtieth. That's that final one. There's three There's of them. There's okay. Tuesday and then a week from Tuesday from then and then two weeks from Tuesday is the thirtieth. It's okay. gonna go from eighty to fifty three. And that's the fifty three that we can carry the whole season. Right. You know, you then you're gonna have a practice squad, I think it's like 15 now and then there's a bunch of different stuff too i don't even know if there's still uh, like a covid protocol or anything like that but you have a little bit of fluctuation with your ir and your pup and all that so right um, that makes but sense. the cuts are rough and so that's why these preseason games are important as we, that's why it's i was like thinking oh man they're really using the rookies a lot and then later i wasn't thinking at the time well, of course they are because they have to give them their opportunity to, to see what they got. Yeah, they they got to put it. They got to put it, put together put it all on film too. Because like all the other teams are going to be like you know look. Because I mean that's that's the thing, right? You know, so you get released from the Seahawks and then you know the the Ravens come along and just pick you up, right? <laughs> yeah, because you know it's yeah. the way it you got to have a portfolio, and they're starting that portfolio. A lot of them that was their first game. I mean, as we get into the players, I mean, the, and the positions, running backs looked great. I thought. Mm-hmm. Ken Walker, you know, he was great at first, you know, he just kind of, but it wasn't nothing spectacular, but it was his first NFL game. I'm sure that guy's stomach was all knotted up. He's probably nervous, you know, all that good stuff. But uh, uh, Travis Homer, man, that dude was shining. Did you Whoa, see him catching passes? Yeah. And yeah. and then, yeah. And then, of course, I, I got to mention DJ Dallas because he's, uh, he's starting, he's, he's working for that starting position, in my opinion. Um, he's really... Penny has a lot of challenge ahead of him, and if he right. can stay uninjured, right? Because that's that the key. I mean, if he's going to stay uninjured, I mean, every every yeah. season, right, he's, he gets fucked up. You know? Right. I always talk about Jamal Adams be our defensive diva. I think Penny's our fucking offensive diva in the <laughs> running back one. <laughs> Seriously, that, dude, why that, that guy yeah. is like so scared? It took Adrian Peterson to come in last year and and put some fire under his ass, and and you know what they say, a lot of fire under his ass because as soon as Adrian Peterson come in uh, when we brought him in, it was that's like an honor to do that, right? They're going to do that more for a uh, inspiration. Uh, tactic than anything else and i guess he exactly. was whispering in penny's ear like what are you fucking waiting for get out there what are you waiting for get out there and then and then he had like four games and just killed it yeah he did the guy, he the guy was talented <laughs> i remember when the, yeah. the the season that he got drafted i watched him in the senior bowl dude on penny and i was impressed had no idea he'd go to the seahawks wow. but in the senior bowl he was just all over the place you know like he had that drive that ambition and then some of these guys they just get that money and they just sleep a little i guess i don't know i don't get it like it's a little bit easier talent. <laughs> yeah yeah sleep sleep in a little bit later every day you know wake like, up play some call of duty and some madden yeah. you know and that's what a lot of them do so that's, that's not a bad life dude that's not, mm-hmm. bad. not at all like i'll just i'll go be a catch kid forever <laughs> be a kid go, forever go catch footballs and uh yeah go slay people at night dude on call of duty dude that's i know <laughs> oh dude, that's the life right that's there that's the buddy. life right there that's right right buddy um but no man i was i was just really uh I don't know, man, because like I like I was telling you, like off uh, off mic, I didn't necessarily get to take any sort of notes on the second half. Um, more, more, more. I was more like, um, you know, wrote wrote down a couple things in terms of like that first half there. Uh, like you said, you know, Travis Homer, dude, he he that that run to the, at the end of the first quarter, he had two straight runs that popped off twenty six yards, dude. And I I was I was paying attention. I was like, damn, dude, because like again, like I remember hearing him get drafted i was driving home from portland hung over his shit dude i remember listening to the seahawks like you know uh you know reactions and shit i remember him because he came from hawaii right like he he played in hawaii if i'm if i'm correct um i just i don't know i just remember his name and you know since then i've kind of you know like you said you know uh you know same with penny you know since the senior bowl i was that's how i felt with homer and stuff so uh, yeah. so pop off those two those two straight runs dude i mean like and that was again like against the ones you know um the, the pittsburgh ones so it was it was good to uh to just again have for one have football back i'm really excited about football 
And uh, Noah Fant, though, I mean, he he almost had a couple a couple big passes in there, dude. There was one kind of a, towards the end of the, uh, I think between the the first quarter and the second quarter there, where he yeah he would if he would have gone a uh, you know tippy toe Flintstone, dude, he would have had that <laughs> catch, dude. But he unfortunately did it, and it was like it was good to see him for the first time because you know just coming out of that that whole trade and stuff with Russell and stuff, I, it's like okay, is Noah Fant going to be a good contributing player of the Seahawks? And it's like you know time will tell for sure. Right, right. No, I mean yeah. Great observations, man, and I, I, I saw the same things. Um, really, the uh, the biggest thing that I liked was, uh, again, the rookies and seeing them getting involved because, again, what we talked about last week was uh, the amount of rookies that we got in this draft, the amount of talent that we got, and how many of them that we're more than likely going to retain. Right. Um, I really think that we're going to retain a lot of them, and that's why I'm really rooting for pretty much all of them. Those guys, Bo Melton, Derek Young, those Bo receivers. Melton, for sure, for sure. Yeah, he's got he's got one of those. What I think somebody compared him to like the way Golden Tate runs, or the way even Tyler Lockett runs with that you know ass out kind of right and chest right. forward. Yeah. But but you know but downhill right as a receiver they get that ball and they're just like downhill. Um, somebody compared him to Golden Tate, I think is what it was, but. Uh, but yeah, um, at the end of the day, um, uh, exciting, exciting. exciting. I, I was very content with what I seen. And uh, I was gonna tell you how easy it was for me to watch all this because I got signed up for this NFL Plus. I was kind of looking at it and then I uh, got gifted a code for the premium version. So I can watch some of the preseason games and stuff on my TV. You know, you can watch most of them, every all the games throughout out of market games, not your own team. Mm -hmm on your tablet or your phone, right? But anyway, there's a there's a condensed version. So you can just, you know, click on that version and watch the speed lined uh, version of the game where it's just a play, you know, nothing in between, just a play, kickoff, yeah. receive. And they it was all awesome. The bullshit. No bullshit. Yeah. And I was like, it's really fitting. You and I have this project, we're doing this podcast and everything. And I was like, oh dude, this is great timing for me to have something like this because I was like, you know, normally I don't look for that kind of stuff. And I was like, ah, I probably wouldn't probably yeah, uh, you know, thanks for the code or whatever. But I was like, oh man, let me check this out. And I was like, oh hell yeah, this is going to be an ar a tool in our arsenal. Um, and and I want to show it to you sometime next time you're over at my place. I'll show you. It's so awesome. You can just watch that. And I just speed line the game. It like took like 20 minutes to watch the whole game. And I watched it like three times. And I was just, everything has just kind of been bedded in my mind of what took place in that game. So that's pretty easy to remember. Yeah, that's what that's what I know, dude. Like I. I don't know, dude. I felt like the, the NFL season was like back yesterday, dude, because I kind of felt the same way. I was like, okay, I got to like pay attention to like what's going on here. I got to like know these guys. You know, I have to like, you know, this is like a get to knowing process at this point here. And it's like, I feel like we have a, you know, a duty to our listeners now to be able to come in here educated with uh, the happenings of the Seattle Seahawks, dude. And like what, you know, have some, some good solid opinions, you know, going into the season and stuff. And yeah, man, I don't know, dude. Like, again, like it just like, it is true Seahawks fashion. I hate to like repeat myself there, but like, I, you know, just with the comeback, you know, again, we didn't beat the, St the Steelers and that's fine. You know, it's preseason or whatever, but like, we just, I don't know. We, we came back we, at one point, dude, we were down 14 to zero, 17 to three, you know, like going into that half, dude, like we, we got that touchdown, dude. We got a little bit of momentum and we just, we kept going in and I forget exactly who I may have been the, the bow that you were talking about. Uh, that we we're talking about earlier, the, the rookie wide receiver, uh, I think it may have been his press conference. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm, I'm just pulling it out. This is what it out of the, 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 the fucking hat or whatever. But like somebody had made mention just how, you know, how Carroll just, you know, as uh, Pete Carroll, as the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, just kept the tempo level. I was like, yeah, just go get him. Just go get him, dude. Like not even a problem, dude. You're down 73, whatever, dude. You're going to go out there and you're going to achieve and we're going to make this happen. And I don't know. It just seems like anytime I do hear the players talking, like I feel like, they've bought into what Kate, uh, Pete Carroll is selling, you know, they bought, they bought into it. So I don't know, dude, I just, I got pretty optimistic about like going into the season, dude. I think a lot of people are going to sleep on the Seattle Seahawks. And I really think we do have potential. I mean, maybe a month from now, I'm saying, I'm seeing a different tune. You never know, knock on wood, but like, you know, you just don't know, dude. I mean, that's the wonderful thing about the, uh, the, the, the beginning of the a new NFL season. It's like, you just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's the beginning of a new era. I mean, the way I look at it, obviously, I mean, Russell Wilson's gone. So uh, it's a new era. It feels like that. Like I said, training camp felt like that. It felt fresh. This season, the, the way that the offense looks, the plays that we were running, 
they look different, don't they? <laughs> right? Yeah. Because of some of the ways we're lining up, some of the little quick slants, some of the little screens, um, right. it looks different. And that's part of, I think, uh, I forgot to touch base on the offensive line. So we're talking about these running backs having a little bit of success and everything. We, you know, that line was holding their own. I, I, I can't, ha I don't have anything negative to say about the offensive line, except for when Drew Locke got blindsided. Yeah, um, <laughs> that was a that pretty was, big blindside too, dude. Right, but, the, but uh, that's the fumble that people are saying that, you know, because I heard some other reporters saying, oh, just like always, Drew Locke, you know, fumbles that they can't follow through. That's not through. his fault. That's dude. not his fault. Yeah, <laughs> that was a blindside. And he took ownership from what I understood, did, you know, but because he, he has to understand where he's at. He has to understand his pocket as well. So, but speaking of the pocket, it seemed like Gino had time. And it seemed like Drew Locke had time. I didn't see, I've seen Gino rushed a few times and he made a good scramble. I seen Drew Locke scramble, but it wasn't like the theme of the moment. Mm -hmm. Remember Russell Wilson, as of the last few years, complained about not having a good line. I don't know if it's just maybe preseason and they didn't have their ones or whatever at Pittsburgh, but the, the line, I felt like they were holding their own. Like again, talking about holding down the fort, I thought the offensive line were letting the running backs do their thing a little bit. And they were also protecting the quarterback and, and allowing them time to make decisions the running backs dude i mean i mean that's a very good point dude i mean you got to have a good solid offensive line for those guys to be able to get going and they they had a really good night dude so therefore the offensive line had a good night dude exactly exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. and then the, and then how how often when gino and drew had time to make those decisions and make their reads and then lay it into somebody i mean that one time gino threw it dart across the field man it was he had zip it was a perfect spiral do you remember that one or he just they call it, they yeah. just said he rifled it and that was a good uh the way they called it was a good description he rifled it across to that guy right in his right in his i call it the numbers of the bread basket um but yeah man good things to say about both of them and you look at the snap count i think we had on one of these links and it was like 53 percent drew locks 47 percent geno smith i mean uh it looks like abe lucas played probably most of the snaps in there charles cross not as much as abe lucas abe lucas looked winded a lot too but you know it's a rookie in his first game uh again those two guys i think it was cross i don't know if cross was in the game when uh drew got blindsided but you there was an extra guy i think on that side that rushed on that one right there wasn't the guy that had the lineman was assigned to there was an extra I think guy so there. i think there yeah. was an extra guy. and i don't think there was a running back back there to, for a, a fail safe so it is what it is. It happens. Yeah, and it was, it, it was, it was textbook. The way you looked at that, it was a, a failed coverage of far as somebody blocking. It wasn't the quarterback's fault. I wouldn't classify that as, Oh, Drew Locke did it again and fumbled. What? <laughs> no. So, yeah. I mean, and plus it's like, dude, it's the first game. Like, you know, you yeah, can't, I mean, you can't have too much of a, like an overreaction to a play like that. I mean, like you said, dude, they didn't have the fail safe in there. So right there automatically, dude, they, they just like, they just, the, the Steelers defense just had a one bet one, one ace up the sleeve, you know, more than what the Seahawks had for that one play. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a, yeah. Go yep. ahead. It was just one of those games. that just ends. Just like you said, just that, just like that. There was a few minutes left. They got the ball back. They won. It was over. So uh, no big deal. It's preseason. I mean, we got to see a lot. And our defense, I mean, the, the play before that, I mean, like, obviously we, I, and I forget exactly if we intercepted it or like if we just got them off, off the field. But I mean, like they they held their ground. I mean, they're on that second half of that game, dude. Like the defense, like showed up. I thought for the most part, dude. Like I thought they played pretty fucking well. I mean, outside of like, you know, a touchdown. I think like what the, the end, the very end of the game, obviously, and then also the one touchdown. But I mean, it, it seemed like they did get them off the field decently enough. They did. The defense did well, and that, and uh, there was one stat I did pick up on. Each of their three quarterbacks threw a touchdown. So mm. well, their good. offense was on their offense was looked great they had a couple of guys on there the receiver that one guy i don't know what his name is but he was fast he was the one that really ran that whole drive and i think got the touchdown i know you're talking uh, about he I was don't, wide open yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah we we had no coverage on that one i don't know what happened but that's why you review film and right. that's why you go hey this is where you fucked up this is where you fucked up and now do it right this time next time right that's exactly. what preseason is all about so yeah. um i think there was a lot of uh good subject matter for the coaches to dissect and and the, the team will be better even next week so i can't wait to see him there at home in uh on thursday that'll be no, great dude. It's, uh, it's, really it's excited about coming that. up dude i mean just a just a handful of days i know that's why i was like man we gotta we gotta get these episodes out dude you gotta, people need the content after the game dude so i was like damn we gotta be quick on this i mean we'll have a fast turnaround next week for, for next week's uh, episode also dude so um yeah man i am right stoked 
on uh, right. the, the Seahawks, dude. And like, you know, again, speaking on, you know, getting to know these guys even more, uh, you know, episode four of The Sound came out, right. if I'm not uh, mistaken. Right, Rich? Have you got a chance to see exactly. that? Exactly. You got a and yeah. good point. You got it. Yeah. If you want to stay in touch with your team, you know, you have all of these resources to use and, and the, the sound that we spoke about before, which is the, the Seahawks docuseries. Episode four just came out and it's uh, featuring DK this time. It, last week, it was episode three with Tyler, or last month. Uh, they're usually about 30 days apart, I believe. Anyway, uh, episode four, yeah, DK Metcalf this time. And it was, it's always a good watch, you know? If you haven't seen it yet, catch up with that series. It's awesome. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. So uh, did, did we have any uh, other news that we wanted to like get to you around the league? I mean, like, I, I feel like unless there's anything we, I think the, the one final thing I do want to say about the game, dude, when we got that field goal, uh, like Jason Myers, like knocked that thing up against the goalpost, but dude, luckily it went in and we got the three mm-hmm. points. Cause I was like, oh man, is, is like this the end where we see the end of Jason Myers? Like, I, don't I know. was like, here we go. That's kind of like right. song, you know, here yeah. we go. Yeah. That's what, that's what I thought too. It hit. And then they said, oh no, but it went in. I was like, oh yeah, fuck what I just said. You, you saved your career, Jason. <laughs> I you take that back. Your career. Yeah, right. <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah, I always look for the little sideshow stuff or the little tidbits in the, and uh, speaking of that app that I have, you know, the NFL mm-hmm. Plus, I was looking at the games and I went down and it said LA Chargers versus LA Rams. I said, where are they playing? They're both LA. at home. <laughs> yeah. They're both at home. Is that like a first be, no, away game? It's is that a first though, where they could, where there's a, a teams are playing both at home during the um, preseason? I mean the Jets and the Giants. I mean I don't okay. know about preseason, right. but like those two teams share a, share a stadium also. Anyway, I thought that was yeah. kind. Of, I didn't know if that was history, but I thought that was kind of cool because they could kind of kill two birds with one stone, right? All the fans, because that's a huge fucking place too, and it's preseason. They're not still not going to sell it out, but all the LA Chargers and LA Rams can all come to their one game. That's I think that's smart by the NFL to do. I that. think it is. Um, I'm still it's, sad. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, dude. I'm still sad about the San Diego Chargers like moving up to LA, dude. To me, they'll always be the San Diego Chargers. Like I don't, I don't give a shit about this. I LA. never. I know. <laughs> I know a few uh, hardcore San Diego ch- fans, but I never really had too much ties to them. I've always just there's a lot of teams in the in, in fantasy, the dude. I, in fantasy, I had a lot of ties. Oh, okay, I got you. Know, you. Antonio I got Gates, you. dude. Like, Ladini and Tomlinson probably too. Okay. Yeah, and Antonio Gates was badass yeah. tied in, but sure. but um yeah so. So uh, other than that, I thought that was kind of interesting and I wasn't sure. I wasn't. I like it. You. No, it's fun, dude. You're no, more of a history cool. guy than I am. I'm more of a uh, day-to-day, uh, week-to-week, <laughs> year-to-year guy. And, and you, you you seem to pull out a lot of that history and that's what uh, helps us complement each other. But yeah. And otherwise, man, you know, before we sum it up, uh, yeah, we, we always seem to be talking about Deshaun Watson a little because it's yeah, in the yeah. news. It's easy but, dude, to talk about this guy. He, he I woke up. I woke up. I was drinking my coffee this morning and I was just stumbled across a little thing, an article, and then it clicked on a little Twitter. And the Jacksonville fans, they were telling, you know, uh, the Browns were playing in Jacksonville, Jaguars. Right. And he was out there. I don't know if he was warming up. I think they were warming up. And Deshaun Watts, and they were saying three words. You know what those three words? Kevin, what, were those three words? what were those three <laughs> words? What were those three words? Like, you, you don't, what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Stop being you. You <laughs> sick fuck. Oh, whoa. You sick fuck. It. You yeah. sick. That's what they were yelling the whole time over and over. I mean, the, the clip was only like 10 seconds or whatever. And there was like probably as many, many as I gave there, but right. I can't imagine. So, yeah, you know, I don't, you know, I didn't look into too many details on what he did. It's just very obvious that it was, he made apologies. He made payment. So there was some guilt there and there was some problems and there was some ownership. So, you know, hey. Remember Michael Vick years ago? There was some problems that he had. He did some some stuff. I don't want to bring it back up. He owned up. He's changed. And people can change. So I'm not going to give Deshaun Watson a pass quite yet. But he's getting his uh, kangaroo court right now. Is what he's getting. So I feel I feel like he's uh, he's definitely going to be on an apology tour for quite some time, man. I mean, like, yeah, he, he's, he's going to get a it. A lot of a lot of sex. <laughs> That's part of the punishment, though. He's going to get is from the, yeah. the general public and the consensus, right? And and this, I don't even want to go into other. I know. Yeah, stuff. <laughs> We're on a Seahawks friendly. podcast here. Yeah, right. We don't but, talk uh, about the Browns, which just as just a last thing about his game, I I did read an article last night on ESPN. It went through like all the. Uh, preseason games and kind of like the you know gave a little synopsis for each team and they talked about uh, Deshaun Watson's performance dude and it wasn't good <laughs> like it was you know obviously he's been out of football for a little bit dude but like go look up his stats if anybody that's listening 
Uh, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, it was like that first preseason game out was not good. Man, I have an opinion as an athlete myself. I've been, I've played a lot of sports over the years. And if mm-hmm. your head's not straight, I talk about having your head straight. You're not going to have, you're not going to be good. And you got to keep right. your head straight throughout. If not, you're, everything else is going to change and your gameplay will go downhill. Age is going to come up. Obviously that's a given, but if you're not keeping your head straight throughout, look at some of the greats, you know, some of these guys, they've just, they've just had it to where they've just stayed focused. They've stayed driven. They've stayed organized and they've stayed systematic yeah. and, and they're, and, and all of that, those sayings that I do, I always say all of the above, right? right? Those, all those sayings go in line with how every year goes for them. So it's easy to say that person a lot because they keep up there, but when they get their mind gets lost or they get like their heads get in the clouds, they get this the, ego. The yeah. yeah. Or, you know, uh, yeah. There's, I'd love yeah. to say a lot of names right now, but we could yeah. go on forever and ever. But uh, that's, that's about all I got, buddy. I don't know about you, but I think this uh, uh, exciting for next week. Again, I'll be at the game on Hell Thursday yeah. uh, at home against the Bears and uh, looking forward to that perspective. I'm excited. I'm excited for you to go to the the first year. Uh, yeah, the, the first preseason game at home at Lumen Field against the Chicago Bears. I'm glad that we're going to have that. Um, we're going to have that representation, you know, this year, dude, you know, in our, in terms of our, uh, for the podcast, yeah, I mean, you're just going to be able to get that live perspective, dude. And I'm going to be able to get that live perspective from my couch with my surround sound every single week, dude. So I know, right. It's right. exciting, dude. Like, I'm just excited for this podcast. I'm excited for hanging out, man. Like I'm excited for you being able to go. It's just like, yeah, I'm ready for uh Thursday to, to come dude. And then, yeah, we will, we'll have another episode out shortly after that game, dude. So I'm, I'm just excited. Yeah, we're gonna have to. We're gonna try to have those episodes out as soon as we can after we can yep. get together after the game, yep. and uh, we, you know, I'm not gonna say anything about numbers. You know, I'm we're not ones to toot our own horn, but I think we're doing pretty good, and we want to make sure that we keep those listeners uh, entertained. So we want to make sure that we have yeah. a commitment. If we're gonna get people clicking on us and listening and and uh, telling their grandmas and their uncles and uh, and uh, everybody and their brother. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, man, our our audience like they they listened last week. They were like, "I'm gonna tell Grandma." Oh hell yeah! Bitch. And they they did, and Grandma listened, and we say thank you. And we know Grandma loves the fucking Seahawks, right? She don't mind those little curse words here and there, f bombs. She's like, "Get them, rich! <laughs> Go get them, rich!" <laughs> They're out there. We got to get them in the comments. Come on, Grandma, let us know. Anyway, Kevin, that's all I got, man. This is is a great time. All right, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kevin Porter. For Rich Harris, uh, let's hawk it out, dude. Subscribe, rate, share again with all your friends and family out there. We'll see you guys next week. All right. Can you win a game in the first quarter? No! Can you win a game in the first quarter?